In this lesson, we will examine types that can hold multiple data. Earlier, we examined a single primitive data type. Rust also has several component data types you can use to store multiple values. With the help of arrays, elements with the same data type are brought together. Each element is assembled contiguously in memory in a row. Arrays have a fixed length because they work on the stack and how much space should be allocated must be specified when defining them. To explain this with an example, the ground floor of apartments in Turkey is actually the zero floor. In this way, the first index starts from zero in arrays, while in order to reach the initial value, we have to specify a zero index. Each cell takes a value from the same data type. Let's show this table horizontally with its indexes. As you can see, as we just mentioned, the indexes went from 0 to 6 respectively, and we have an array that takes 7 values in total. Defining arrays is very simple. You define the type of value you want to receive by putting a comma between them in square brackets. For example, let's define a float array. As you can see, we have defined a five element array containing float type values. To access the value, we specify the index in square brackets after the name of the array. By writing it this way, we get the value 3.14 here. Let's try this in code. Now let's define a char array that will help you understand the logic of its strings, which we will see later. I'm converting the letters of my name into a char array. Let's print the first value with the println macro. Getting the values of the array is quite simple as you can see. When creating the array, Rust Analyzer automatically understood the type and displays it for us. If you want, you can specify the type like this. Specifies the type before the semicolon and how much space the value should be allocated in RAM after the semicolon. Sometimes we can reserve a place and assign later. For this, we specify the value to the left of the semicolon and how many to the right. We learn the length of arrays with the length function. I haven't shown the functions yet, but we will write the name followed by the dot operator and length to print the length of the second array with the find. So we can print how many pieces of data our array has. In the future, you will find that it is very useful when designing your algorithms.